Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. We're going to be cleaning up the base a little bit and getting ready to start the space race next time. Last time we were doing some things in a thinking pack and we set up GPS satellites up in the sky different places. But in any case, we're going to proceed. This is episode 74 of a thinking pack. Today, I think we're going to be uh, just tying up a couple of loose ends here and there. And then launching into, at least this is the plan, that little thing in the menu is a space race manager, which is about us going to space. And I'm thinking that we're going to be starting that in the next episode. Let me know what you guys think about that idea. But today, we have one more episode to go until the nice round number of 75. And so I think what, we, what we're going to do today is um, clean up a couple of things, such as this big hole in the base and the other big uh, quarry hole over there so that we have the maximum space to be able to work on going to space, if that makes any sense. So, there are two places we could start this time. There is this, which is the easier of the two to solve because it's water, but then there's also this over here, which is the harder of the two to solve because this section of the base is full of oil. And for those of you guys who are new to the series, Basically, we're trying to make an underground base, a, uh, a hidden secret base kind of idea. And so this, uh, this big hole is a big problem. And the problem is actually as big as the hole is, if that makes sense. But in any case, you know, pretty soon we'll be able to travel through the actual base underground to reach all the way over into this quarry section. And you know what? An idea for the future. We have railcraft in this mod pack. And our base is actually really big. I wonder if we should set up automatic trains that go by every, like, 10 seconds or something and loop through the whole base so that we can get around to different places in the base. That's an idea. Let me know, let me, uh, know what you guys think about that idea. Also, I don't know if you guys remember the um, last time we tried to do the uh, digging of the sand, and it was very slow of a process. But this thing now, with the help of the poly tool, and it's not even full speed digging sand, it is, as you can see, shovel is the last thing there. It's a 6.0 speed that's less than the standard speed, and it can go all the way up to 16. But at a 6.0, we're just digging through this sand really, really quickly. It's amazing, and we'll be getting done the sand in no time and getting on to actually smelting the thing and getting the stuff and uh, stuff like that. Now, you may be wondering, Handy Andy, why are you making a whole big base like this that is really big and a lot bigger than we need because it goes all the way from the surface all the way down, and so it's like a huge big base. Why do we need such a big base? Well, the idea, part of the idea is that we are getting all of the things inside the base that will be the uh, the future plan and so what i mean by what uh, what i mean by all of the things is things such as a wheat farm a tree farm a pretty much any other farm that we happen to need that would be the idea because this is supposed to be a hidden underground base so eventually the idea is to have everything inside the base so that someone going by on the surface will not know that the base is here, and then if they break through accidentally, they're like, oh, whoa, there's like a huge base in here. That's the idea. Even though it's a single-player uh, single player world, so it doesn't really matter whatsoever. But in any case, that is besides the point. The point is that we are making a secret base, and we're going to be putting everything inside. And in case you're wondering, a tree farm would probably most likely go in the quarry section over here because the quarry section is really big and tree farms need a lot of space if you want to make a sizable tree farm. And as you can see, there's a lot of space inside this area over here. So that's an idea. We could also use this as a giant launching platform for rockets and things. Um, we could also have multiple layers, so we could have the trees down there, and then have the launching platform for the rockets um, up on a higher level, because the rockets really aren't that big, actually. Um, so it's possible that we could do that. Um, or we could put the rocket launching thing in the next section over there that we're clearing the oil out of right now because it is, um, it is a nice small-ish place that could perhaps take rockets very nicely. I don't know. Um, let me know what you guys think. Should we set up the rockets in this area because it's a giant area except that the rockets are really small so it doesn't matter? Or should we go in that area over there in the next, uh, section where the oil is? Um, let me, let me know what you guys think about all that kind of stuff, but in any case, we need to get rid of the, uh, oil, not the oil, but the water over here, 
And as you can see, so we broke the, uh, or rather, we plugged up the water flow from that place up top. And now it is currently, that's way over there, if you can sort of see that in the dark. Whoops, let's not fall down, please. And now there's a little bit, there's apparently, there was a little bit of a water lake over here. Um, so we need to plug this up somehow, but it is going to be easier said than done, because we essentially need to put a block in the middle of mid-air. Um, so that's going to be difficult to do, unless we go ahead and build all the way over from the side there. But why would we do that when we can go ahead and use a turtle? So let's go ahead and grab a turtle. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and how exactly are we going to get out of here? Um, let's try going down here, I think might be the best idea, because this will take us right underneath our base, and now we can get through here and get to the rest of the base. Okay, now, I think we have a turtle floating around somewhere, or not floating around, but like, uh, just around somewhere, that we are not using, and if that is the case, then we can use one of those turtles to basically travel down the distance to, uh, to reach that place, um, that, that floating in midair block, and the turtle will arrive there, and as soon as he arrives there, we need a bucket, thank you very much. As soon as the turtle arrives there, then he will, uh, he, he is a solid block, essentially, and so he will overwrite the water, and so that will be a good way of dealing with the situation without having to build a giant bridge of cobblestone, which would probably be easier in the first place, but we have to do it the thinking pack way. We need to do things a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, uh, whatever the word is, challenging, I guess you could say. So, this is a turtle. We have the bucket to fuel said turtle, and so now let's go ahead and head back downstairs, and I think we can get through this way and head all the way out into the quarry from this direction. So, let's go ahead and head all the way down here like this. Um, where exactly was the entrance to the quarry? I think it was over here. Um, we go down here. This is our strip mine, or rather, it was our strip mine that we were mining a while ago. Um, where is the... Oh, it's over here. And we used to be mining our own business, but now that we no longer need to mine our own business because we have a quarry, or rather had a quarry, things are going out, uh, going out, going very well. Things are going very well. Um, let's see, if we get all the way up here, there we go, okay. Now, what we can do is we can place the turtle down next to the wall, there we go. And now we can go ahead and stand next to the wall so that we won't be uh, floating around all over the place. And we can start programming the turtle. And it is a simple program. All we need to do is first of all tell it to refuel. Refuel. There we go. And it has refueled now. Let's grab our bucket back. Thank you very much. And let's go right to this way. It will turn around. There we go. And now let's go forward. How far away do you think that place is? Let's say maybe 20 blocks. Go forward 20. And now it is on its way forward, and we shall see that it should pass the destination by a long shot. And then we have to turn it around and tell it to go back, let's say, 10 blocks. And then we need to turn it around to go that way and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and do so. So, let's go ahead and uh, this is going to be very difficult. Didn't think this through properly. Because we need to uh, stand somewhere where we will not fall off. So that we can, because uh, if we open the menu to program, we will go ahead and fall straight down into the water. And get out of range of the turtle and we will not be able to program him from down there. So, let's go ahead and try to place a block underneath the turtle. Let's hold shift and try to, come on, get closer to the turtle, get closer, we need to be close enough, but then holding shift, and there we go, placed a block properly, that is good, okay, let's go ahead and try to climb on top of that block, and see what we can do from there, there we go, now we are on top of the turtle, now, go right to, and now he is spinning the right way around, and let's tell him to go forward instead of 20, let's say 10, and there we go. Now the turtle is going forward 10, and he is going to stop right just about exactly where we need him to be, which is perfect. So now let's go ahead, and I think we can do it just by climbing on top of the turtle. Yes, we can. Thank you, water. You're very helpful. Now, go right 
one. There we go. And now he is facing the right way. Let's tell him to go forward. Let's say five. That seems like roughly the right number, and we fell off the turtle because he moved out of the way. Now he is floating inside this place over here. We need him to get specifically to that block over there. So let's go ahead and build up a little bit from the turtle, and we cannot stand on top of him because the water is sending us away backwards. So let's go ahead and, uh, and build backwards a little bit. There we go. Oh, that didn't work very well. Because the water just flowed right over top of the cobblestone. Let's go ahead and get up here. And what are we doing stuck in a major uh, hole in the water? How can you even have a hole in the water? That is a thing that only occurs in Minecraft. Where you have a whole bunch of water and you have a hole in it. Because right there, as you can see, is a hole in the water. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and build up a little bit more. And now let's go ahead and get out of this hole in the water. And let's go ahead and go all the way up here. That is the thing. Okay, there we go. Now we can tell the turtle, go up. Uh, three, let's say, because we need him to get high enough up out of the water that, oh, he just made a hole in the water. Okay, let's go down. Go down because we need him to be on level with the water. Go down one, maybe. Is that the right place? Probably not. Let's go down one more. And now go right, go right one, and now go forward three or two. Go forward two. There we go. And now he has run through that block of water. That was the not easy way to do it, but we did it. And so that is that. And now, as you can see, the water is slowly retreating until it reaches the point where it's coming out of that area over there. So we need to go ahead and fix that, but we also need to do something about this turtle because we are going to lose the turtle due to height restrictions fairly soon. So let's send him to the wall, I think would be a good idea, because as the water goes down, if we ever need this turtle again, we will not be able to reach him. But again, if we break the turtle, then we'll be losing all the fuel that is in the turtle, so we need to leave him in the world. So let's go ahead and uh, tell him to go to somewhere where we can build up from very easily. So go right, and there we go. And now let's tell him to go forward to uh, 25. Go forward 25. There we go. And now he is going, and he will hit the wall, which is perfect. That's what we like to see today. And now let's break this, and let's go ahead, now that we have fallen down into the hole in the water again, we can go ahead and head all the way over here and try to plug up this hole in the wall, because that actually makes sense, whereas having a hole in water doesn't really make sense, unless it were ice, but in that case it's not water anymore, so let's go ahead and plug up this hole like that, and we now have a successful plug in the wall which is perfect so now let's go ahead and uh, watch the water go down very quickly like this and the quarry arm is still there which is a thing to consider well we're gonna have to break the quarry um this thing needs some more light over this way so i think i'm gonna go ahead and set up some more light and the water is going to keep disappearing and we will see what comes of it. And I will be back in a minute or two as soon as after getting up the area. Okay, there we go. And time to go and try to make a hole in the roof so that we can see something properly. And I'll be back in a minute. And in case you're wondering how this whole hole in the ceiling thing works, uh, I've explained it before. But if you're new to the series, basically what happens is the light comes down directly from the sun. And... It basically, the light levels from sunlight is always the same, but every block it goes away from sunlight, it, um, it loses some brightness. So that is basically how it works. So what happens is, like, you put a torch down there, for example, and then the light level goes down by one every time it reaches another block, and that's why the light eventually goes away. Now, what happens with sunlight is sunlight goes down straight directly from the sun. So if you make a direct hole down to underground, then the uh, the sunlight will come directly down that shaft and then go away from that shaft, um, even all the way down at the bottom of the world. It will go away from that shaft and lose its um, light levels by one every stage it goes away from this shaft, but it means that you can get light all the way down to the very bottom of the... Um, very bottom of the world that way using that technique. So that is a excellent thing 
to do to get light down at the bottom of the place. Now, we have a small problem. Um, we need to uh, we need to go ahead and fill in this with dirt so that if someone comes by here and le uh, unless they notice the hole in the tree, it will not be obvious that there is a base down here. Um, as soon as we place this block down, though, we will be uh, we will be falling straight downwards. So hopefully the water is still there and has not been uh, completely removed. It looks as if the water is still there, but we're far enough away that perhaps with the chunk loading and stuff, it's possible that the water has disappeared. But hopefully it hasn't. Let's go ahead and see if it is indeed still there. And it is indeed still there, which is perfect. That is good. That is what we like to see today. So... Now, as you can see, we, okay, we are really far down. We're in the area where the, uh, the void effect takes effect. And the void effect, in case you're wondering, is something to do with being closer to the void, which is right underneath the bedrock. If you're closer to that, then you can't see as far away. Um, if we keep climbing up here, which we will do, in fact, because the, um, the water is still flowing out of somewhere over here. But if we keep climbing up higher and higher... We'll get less of the void effect and we can see what is actually going on. And as you can see, we now have a lot of light in that corner, a lot of light in that corner, and we need some light in the middle, but we are good for now because we have light on the rest of it on this side, and so we have a fair amount of light in the entire base. So that is excellent. Now, as you can see, we have a small problem with some oil over here. That is what is taking up a lot of space in the base at least in section four. Let's label this section four, I think. Um, the uh, the entranceway, the small entranceway, let's go ahead and get down into the, the underground area so we can get to the rest of the base. But the uh, the small entranceway where we go through the piston door, that would be section one. And as you go through, then you get section two and section three, which is currently being cleared of oil. And then this would be, I guess, section four, except that there's room for a section four in between here that doesn't exist yet. So perhaps we'll have to relabel it at some point. But in any case, that is that for now. And there we go. And now let's get away all the way over here. And now we have made it through to the base like this. And there we go. So now where is section three of the base at? It is obviously through this pathway, and there's a lot of fire noise, which is a little bit disconcerting, except that it is right where it's supposed to be, which is good. So, now, we need to head all the way up here and check on the oil situation over here. We gave it a whole big tank, and it has taken over half of the tank already. And how far down exactly is it? It is down... Uh, what would that be? That would be uh, one, uh, maybe two... Three, four, five, maybe a six, something like that. It has gone down a fair distance, but it still has a long ways to go, so obviously we need a lot more tank. We need a lot more tank, so let's go ahead and get some more tank, and I'll be back with you in a moment or two. You know what, guys? This was supposed to be a simple project, but it is taking a long time, and now you may be asking, what exactly is taking a long time? Well... One thing in particular is the tank making process, because that was two stacks of glass made 16 tanks. And 16 tanks may sound like a lot, but when you actually measure it out, you find that you're going upstairs instead of downstairs when you're supposed to go downstairs. But in any case, when you actually measure out the tanks, 16 tanks is not a lot. And when you look at the distance that we will probably be having to pump... It turns into a lot of tanks to be able to do the task. So let's go ahead and we need to actually build up here a little bit so that we can get to the place up there to continue building these tanks because we are out of spots to put a tank around that wooden pipe there. But in any case, as you can see, these tanks are like this. If we go ahead and add 16 more tanks to, uh, let's divide them up evenly between the, uh, between these existing tanks to give them the maximum height, um, possible between the three of them, um, what we end up having is we have a situation of adding 16 divided by 3 to every tank, and what happens then is we added, that made it up to the proper distance, we're adding 5, essentially, to every tank, and that may sound like a lot, but it will go very, very quickly because that's five out of how tall this thing already is. And as you can see, once we get down here, 
that extra that we added is about, that one's a good way to measure, um, it's about a small portion of this entire tank. And we have a long, long ways to go, it looks like, so far. Um, what level are we at, actually? What Y level? We are at the Y level of 38.62, that's the middle two numbers there. Um, which is not exactly quite precise because the satellites need to be recalibrated, but it's within, like, one or two blocks. But in any case, 38 Y level, um, that means that down there is probably, you know what, we might not have too far still to go. Um, we'll have to see. But in any case, let's see what we can do about this. If we need more tanks, we may actually need to upgrade the poly tool. That's what I, what the, uh, the point was. So, the poly tool, in order to get the upgrade to the digging speed, let's check on mine cam we would need to install which kind of material to it. So we would need probably cadmium would be the best option because the reason we need this is because we need to mine a whole lot of sand in order to turn the sand into uh, glass and stuff like that. Um, we would need probably cadmium. It raises the shovel digging speed of the poly tool by eight, but it, um, the other things, it brings them down a little bit as well, which is a thing to consider. Um, we can also use vanadium, but it brings the other things down by a lot. Um, we could also use, no, no, that's not it. Um, there was something else we could use. Oh, van uh, no, that's vanadium. That's what we were just saying. Um, manganese, which I think we have a lot of. It brings the ore mining speed down by a lot and the axe mining speed down by a lot. And we need both of those to be maximum speed. So, not entirely sure. Uh, do we have any cadmium? Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and check that out because then we can upgrade the poly tool and do some more digging really fast to get some sand to get some more tanks um actually let's just take a look at the mine chem situation um tanks are made out of glass actually tanks do they have a mine chem recipe themselves tank let's see let's check the recipe no it does not have a mine chem recipe however glass which makes the tanks may in fact have a mine chem recipe and it does it is made from silicon dioxide and silicon dioxide is made from sand, which is not helpful. Um, it's also made from gravel, which is not helpful either, um, because we still have to dig that. And it is also made from flint, which is not helpful because you get that from glass as well. Um, wait, obsidian makes a reasonable amount of it, but that takes a long time to mine. We have a whole bunch of glass, we have a whole bunch of things probably with a lot of glass in the component. Um, we could also use silicon and oxygen to make the thing. And silicon we get from... Cobblestone, things like that. Um, Skystone, not a lot of things that are helpful uh, at the moment, at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the poly tool if we can find the materials to do so. Um, what was it that it took again? It took over here. Um, we're going to try the, what was it? It was over here somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Oh, yes, right here. Cadmium. That would be the best idea, because what happens with the poly tool, I don't think uh, I've explained this before, which should probably have happened a long time ago, but the poly tool, as you can see, it has the different measurements, and what happens as soon as you add something like, for example, cadmium, where is it? It is over here. As soon as you add cadmium to the poly tool, it brings the shovel measurement up by 8 to a maximum of 16, and we can fit that no problem, because our shovel currently is 6, um, it brings everything else down by two each, and you can bring them down to four minimum, which means that if we were to try to add something such as vanadium, where it brings the ore mining speed down by four, well, the ore mining speed is currently six, and it can't go lower than four, so we could not add the, uh, the, whatever it was, the thing over here. Um, I think that was how it worked. If, uh, if that is correct, then that is how it works. But in any case... We are going to try to add the, I forgot what it was already, it was a thing, um, cadmium, yes, we're gonna, I'm gonna look around, see if we have some cadmium, and be, be uh, back with you in a minute. Alright, turns out we do not have any cadmium, we do not have any cadmium, so let's go ahead and mix some. We are going to use our chemical fusion chamber once again, and we are going to stick in some calcium, because as you can see in blue, it says 20, we need to basically add up until we reach 48. 
So 20, and let's add 10 because that's neon, and there we go, and one problem is that our engines are all stopped because we have not had any, any machines running, so the engines have overheated and stopped. So let's go ahead and restart the engines like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that is that, and we are probably going to need a lot of power, possibly. Possibly powerful per something word, something that starts with the same syllable. Anyways, let's go ahead and try to check this out. Um, yeah, 3,000 each. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the second engines, but as you can see, we are making zinc, which is 30, and, oh, when we already have some calcium down here, uh, hmm, that could be helpful for something. Um, let's go ahead and try to, uh, start the rest of the engines. I'll be back with you in a minute. Hopefully this will be done. We are going to add to the, uh, those two things. We're going to be adding some more neon to bring it up to 40, and we need it to be 48, so we're going to add some oxygen, because all of those things are plentiful right now for, uh, what we have in our situation right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and start those extra engines over there manually and be back with you in a minute or two. The energy required per item on the right side there, it seems to go up depending on the uh, complexity of the item. So this item that's being produced right now is a 40, whereas the last one was a 30. And as you can see, this one requires 4,000 RF per item. Uh, RF is the unit for energy. And, uh, and the previous one required 3,000 RF per item, and actually that relates because this requires 4,000, and it's, it's a 40 measurement, so it's like the, uh, the measurement on the item, the, uh, the atomic number on the item, which is the blue number, times 100 is what it seems to be, so chances are the, ne the next level where we'll, blah, 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 getting tongue-tied, like that, and, uh, but chances are the next stage of the item will require 4,800 RF. That sounds probable, because as soon as we add the oxygen to it, that could be the situation. Um, speaking of oxygen, you may have been wondering why are there two stacks of oxygen in the inventory? Well, the reason for that is because when you are trying to mine over here and mine all the sand out of the water, it gets very, uh, very difficult when you have to keep coming up to breathe all the time. Um, so, oxygen, as you can see, gives extra air when mining underwater. So, let's go ahead and edit the poly tool. Let's add a stack of oxygen to the thing. So now, our air should not go down quite so quickly. Not entirely sure how much of a difference it'll make. It seems to be going down very quickly as it is. Um, so maybe that didn't make that much of a day. Oh, you know what? Maybe it just matters if we are mining underwater. Let's go ahead and check that out. See if this actually makes a big difference to the poly tool or not. Let's go underwater and let's do some mining and see how long the oxygen takes. It seems possibly, I don't know, it seems to be about the same. Um, maybe it needs a lot more oxygen to actually have the effect do anything. Possibly. Maybe. Not entirely sure why it wasn't doing anything right now. Um, but in any case, let's go ahead and check on the mine chem machine over there, the chemical fusion chamber, and see what in the world is happening with it. Let's see, now that it has done that stage, let's see if it indeed takes 4,800 RF to do the next stage. And it does indeed. It takes 4,800 RF to combine these two elements together to make a 48 number element. But the 48 number element is cadmium, and cadmium will be able to change the poly tools mining, shovel mining speed to something that is very helpful, and that is that. So, now what are we going to do from here? We are going to go ahead and head to somewhere else, um, such as in the next place over a couple of, uh, of stations, uh, not stations, but like, um, a couple of blocks over, a couple of sections of the base, that's the word, a couple of sections of the base over, we are going to head over there and see if we can get some, uh, some stuff happening from over there. Um, let's see, what is going on? We are filling up the tanks really quickly, but we are, ooh, we're, uh, we're freeing up more stuff over there, and this place full of oil is slowly getting reduced down to size. There's a little window in there. I want to see how high up that is because we are currently at roughly 
38.62, that's the middle two numbers, um, 38.62y, if we go ahead and climb down here, there's the hole, and this is at 26. Okay, so how far is the oil from the bottom of the, uh, of the place? If we break through, and they're all getting, didn't mean to do that, um, if we break through, I'm gonna break through there, if we break through and the oil is there, then it will flow onto the floor, but looks like it won't do any damage, so that is okay. So, let's go ahead and break through like this. Is there any oil at that level? Oh, that's pretty close to the level, actually, which means that the oil is right about at the level 19.62. We are doing well. It is going down very nicely, and as you can see, that is the oil there. It was, oh wow, that's a lot of oil. That thing uh, over there was probably filled with oil, that big gap over there. Um, and it has drained all of that. That is why it has taken so long to get through it. Which means also, it looks as if, it looks as if the, that thing sort of rounds off. There's a cobblestone in the way. Um, that area, that big, uh, big round area sort of rounds off at the bottom, and chances are, after it gets through that, chances are there's no actual oil source blocks in the, uh, in the actual base section. They were all over in that area, probably, maybe, possibly. And so that means that once it gets through there, this thing should just go ahead and get, uh, get, get, get gotten rid of very quickly because it's all flowing blocks, possibly, maybe. Which means that we may not actually need more tanks, but let's go ahead and see if we can get a faster mining speed on the poly tool anyways. So let's go ahead and do that, and let's go ahead and head all the way over here and check on the situation. We currently have 47 cadmium. We currently have... Uh, we have 16 more to go to make the full stack. We need a full stack to add to the poly tool to be able to do what we need it to do. Now, what will it do exactly to the poly tool? It will take the ore mining speed down to 4, which is minimum. It will take the stone mining speed down to minimum. It will take the axe mining speed down to minimum. And it will take the sword down from what it is right now, which is 16, down to half of double... Not down to half of double speed. It will take it from double speed down to less than double speed. Which is okay. So, let's go ahead and do that. Um, cadmium, please. Thank you very much. Almost. Seven oxygen remaining. We got 57 cadmium over there. Six oxygen remaining to go. Or uh, six oxygen and six zirconium. That is an interesting thing to pronounce. But we are waiting for the zirconium and the oxygen to combine into the cadmium. We have four left to go. Three. Two. This is like one of those countdown things, you know, at the beginning of things that they do all the time. And one, except that it's really slow. And there we go. The, the slow countdown is done. Now we can go ahead and take our poly tool and add the cadmium to it. Let's just go ahead and uh, and do comparison, first of all. So let's go ahead and head out to somewhere where we can dig, such as the sand, for example. Might be a good place to start. There we go. And let's go ahead and head all the way over to the sand. This side of the lake is mostly cleared of sand. Let's go ahead and head over to this side because over this way there's some sand over this way, which is nice indeed. Now, let's get over here. And there we go. We got some sand. So, how quick is the poly tool in its current state? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and try the poly tool after upgrading it with cadmium. As you can see, the shovel speed went from 6 to 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wow, that's a lot faster. How fast is it underwater? Because underwater mining is always slower than above water. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that's about as quick underwater now as it was above water before. That is possibly... That seems to be the case. And you know what? Perhaps why the uh, why the other thing that we added is not working, the thing to breathe longer underwater, is possibly because it was for mining, and we are not mining, we are digging. Maybe it is specific about those two. Let's try this, actually. Let's do some mining and see if our air will go down any slower. It doesn't appear to be going down any slower, so that is a thing 
Um, we do not need this quarried stone right now, so let's go ahead and put that back. And we have gotten 40 sand already. Wow, okay. Let's go ahead and fill in the stack of sand. 42, 40, whatever it is now. And let's go ahead and dig some more from up here because above water digging is always a lot faster than underwater digging. And there we go. And now we should be close to a full stack. And that is now a full stack. There we go. And, oh, plus one. <laughs> Hello, chicken. What are you doing in the in the, the lake? Hello, you're just uh, looking. You're trying to get over there. No, you're just trying to hang out in the water. Okay. Well, have a good day, sir. Goodbye, sir. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and head back over here. And before we check on the oil progress, which should be reasonably far along by now, we shall go ahead and uh, do some of this stuff in the furnaces, just so that we can have a little bit more glass ready in case we need it and let's go ahead and head all the way in here and check on the mining progress not the mining progress rather but the uh the 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 whatever it is progress and let's go ahead and check on the whatever it is progress so over here is where the problem starts and over here is where the problem finishes as you can see because it is finished which is excellent indeed now we have our tanks that are very much full of oil and we have the uh, the oil or the water or something is being uh, removed from the bottom of the place. And now we can head into the other section of our base. We now have this thing available to use, which is excellent indeed. Let's go ahead and get down without dying. We need to set up a waterway to get down here. But in any case, now we can get through to the section of the base. The grand reveal, it is a mess. So let's go ahead and fix the mess, but not today, because all we need to do today is just sort of get the... Uh, get the base sealed off and ready to sort of use to some degree. That is the idea. So... Let's see. Now, we are all the way down here, and we can go ahead, and uh, this is excellent. We need to close off the roof, but we also need to check on the quarry progress. Not the quarry progress, but the, um, the water removal progress from the quarry site, and this is not the way to get through without falling down. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and get over here, and as you can see, the water is still here. It is very, very much still here because we are currently in it, so that is a good way to tell. Now, when we get up to here, oh yes, there was the oil problem. You know what? That looks like not a lot of oil. Um, Let's try to get under the water so that we can head over here. That looks like not a lot of oil, and it looks like it turned into water. Actually, it definitely turned into water because we are currently in water. So let's go ahead and head all the way over to the end of here and refill our breathing bar. It seems that when you're not at the surface, it seems that you go faster. So let's go ahead and head underneath and head all the way over to here. There we go. Now, this seems to be mostly flowing blocks of water, of oil, I mean. So I think if we go ahead and just plug it up from the wall, let's go ahead and head over here so we can do that. But if we just go ahead and plug it up, then we should be good to go. And then we should be able to get rid of the final stages of this uh, this thing that is taking up our section of our base over here. And then we will have the full base ready to start the space race next episode if we, uh, if we do that. Hopefully we'll be... That's the plan, at least, is to be doing that next episode. So, let's go ahead and see if we need to do anything else. There is not enough light in this area to see properly, but it looks like the oil is flowing out of something down here. Uh, hello, hello. There's got to be some way to place some blocks down here. There we go. That is a start. Um, let's go ahead and head over here and head over here, and then let's go ahead and try to... That is not what we're trying to do. Let's go ahead and try to place some cobblestone down here and plug in the oil section. And this is going to be quite the challenge. I'm going to be back with you in a minute once this is done, I think. Turns out this was a double-layered problem. So yes, the oil was coming out of there, but now the water is coming out of there. If we go ahead and plug the water up, let's see. That may be the final block to get the entire place to be rid of water. That appears to be, yes. That appears to be the case, unless there's something else showing up underneath that we didn't know about before, but I think that is the final thing needed to get the entire section of the base 
free of water, which is excellent indeed. So I think that that is this section of the base done. We don't need to close off the roof because the roof is, um, is already pretty much closed. And we need to close off the roof on the other section of the base, and then the base is completely sealed, and the base itself will be completely what we're looking for in a hidden base. But then we obviously have the problem of there's things outside, uh, like our sugarcane farm and stuff like that, which sort of make the hidden base no longer hidden, um, except that... It's going to take a big amount of work to move those things, so we're not ready to do that just yet. We'll get to that later on. Um, but let's see. Okay, so the water is completely gone. We now have a section of the base. It needs a little bit more light, but it is clear of water, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and parkour our way all the way over to some place like, oh, that's our entrance over there. Um, we are quite a ways down. Oh, what about this over here? I think this might be a way through. This might be a way- Oh, that's lava! Oh dear, what's happening? Um, unknown command! What is happening? Okay, I'm pressing wrong buttons! Let's get out of the way because we're about to die to lava! Okay, we got away from the lava. Thank you very much. Uh, thank- uh, thankly- uh, thankfully for getting around this place. Um, let's see now. Um, okay, let's not dig through there. Um, okay, let's go ahead and dig- and build up this way instead of digging through there. Because lava, okay, that was quite the uh, quite the startling situation. Um, let's go ahead and head across here. Thankfully, this is pretty close to our... Oh, this is close to this section of the base over here. And then we can head from this section... Uh, thank you. Please get out of the... Uh, get out of the bedrock. Thank you. Okay. Um, we can head from this section over to... What is in there? There's cobblestone there for some reason. Um, we can head in to the other section... Of the base over here, so now we have a pathway, roughly speaking, to get through to the other section. All four sections of the base are roughly connected. And the remaining thing to do is to go ahead and plug up the roof to this section, which is what we are trying to do right now. So let's go ahead and get up top. We need a bunch of dirt. The dirt is in this chest over here. Not over here, but over here, like this. We got a bunch of dirt, and we can go ahead and plug up the roof with the dirt, and let's go ahead and grab some more cobblestone because we may need it. And there we go. Let's go ahead and do this properly. We need to do our proper scaffolding, so let's go ahead and fill in. Um, hmm, actually, maybe we don't need to... I was going to do a layer of cobblestone and then fill in the dirt above it, but I think we may not need that. We may just need the task of filling in one single layer of dirt that may be sufficient for our purposes. Let's go ahead and do that. We need to sort of make it look like it fits in with the surrounding area. And I think it will do that very nicely if we go ahead and build like this. There we go. And let's go ahead and fill this in and I'll be back with you in a minute or two. There we go. What do you think? I think it, uh, I think it looks good. What do you guys think? Um, trying to sort of build in some patterns, like the grass is over there and the grass is over there, so let's connect the two. But also some irregularities, like uh, there's a one block thing and then a three block thing and then a one block sticking in the middle thing. And that sort of matches what this is doing a little bit. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think this place looks uh, natural dirt? generation or not obviously it'll turn into grass later but i mean in terms of the uh, the shape and stuff but in any case that is the section done we will need to poke some holes in the roof for lighting but we'll do that at a later date so that is the plan so now we have currently section three of the base has been where is the section three where is the entrance we need actually quite a few more entrances after setting up quite a few more floors which will be coming later because we will need loads and loads of floors. But section three of the base is currently in darkness, but it is completely done. So that, well, not completely done, but completely sealed. We have sealed the base. We now are no longer visible from the outside by a big, uh, big open hole in the ground. And the quarry section is free of water so now we can go ahead and use that to build in as well which is perfect 
We now have a bunch of things happening all at once. We now have the base is looking better. It needs some trees, actually. It definitely needs some trees. Um, we actually have quite a few saplings, I believe. Possibly. We have some of them. I'm going to go ahead and check that out. We do indeed. We have an entire stack of oak saplings. So let's see. We need to sort of set these up so that they look like a forest. So not put them in patterns too much. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, and build them out a little bit. We need to put some of them farther away from each other and some of them closer to each other and sort of get this place looking a little bit more like a forest. We don't need some here because there are some gaps in the forest. So there we go. Let's make a few gaps in the forest as well. There we go. And now let's go ahead and build this up a little bit more like this. And I think if we go ahead and put some trees down like this, we should end up with a ton of trees on top of the base. And then it will look like part of the forest. That is the idea, at least. And we will see how it goes. And then, of course, we will need to poke holes in the trees to get the light through into the base. But we can deal with that once the trees have actually grown. So, it appears appears that we have a full forest section of trees, which is perfectly perfect indeed. So, that is that. So, let's see now. We should be getting a bunch of trees growing relatively soon. By next episode, we should have a full forest up on top of the base over here. And you know what? We should really have some birch trees in here as well, which we do not really have. We have one birch sapling. Let's go ahead and add one birch sapling to the... I don't know. Where should we add the birch sapling? Let's add it to right about... E let's make a line between that birch tree and that birch tree. I think might be a good idea. So let's go ahead and put the birch tree right there. There we go. Now we have the forest... And it is going to be a forest, at least. So there we go. So now we have the base is sealed off from the roof. We have the quarry is free of water. And we have the end of the episode is time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys are excited for the space race next episode, which will probably be the plan, or rather it is the plan, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if you guys are excited for that, then let me know in the comments and leave a like on the video, stuff like that. And uh, stuff like that. Anyways, next time we are going to be doing the space race, or at least beginning the space race and trying to get to space as quickly as possible because I think it is possible to do so now that we have the basic infrastructure set up with all the mine chem machines and things like that. And so, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys later. Bye-bye!